All right, there we go. Uh, I just turned 30, and I know what a lot of you are thinking. Alex, you've looked 35 in the past five years, and you're not wrong. Uh, but I just turned 30, and I'm doing a lot of reminiscing, a lot of looking back at my life and my career as I hit this big milestone in my age. And I just wanted to share some of that with you today. I definitely learned a lot of things, especially after I got out of college. I feel like just everything went warp speed and now I'm here and it feels pretty wild. And I'm gonna cover a few different topics, including money, relationships, family, health and career, and maybe a few other things along the way. But I'm not gonna make this the longest video in the world. I'm hoping to keep this somewhat condensed, but who knows, sometimes I just get to talking. The first one I'm gonna start with is family and kind of relationships in general. But about eight years ago, I got married and I had three kids and now I am 30 with three kids. And it feels wild to say because I feel like I just got out of college. And so my life has kind of progressed pretty quickly in this area. And I would say that family to me has been one of the most important things that's happened in my life. I still put most of my focus and emphasis on my family. They are the most important thing in my life. They brought me more joy and happiness than literally all the other things I'm gonna talk about combined. And so I put a really big emphasis on family. Right now, that family is my family that I have built, but I also have extended family. I have my parents and my brother and my sister, and I have other relationships outside of that with my friends and my friend group. And those are also really important. But when it comes down to it at the end of the day, the most important thing is my family that I have built, taking care of them, spending time with them, making memories as the kids grow. That has brought me more joy than just about anything in the world. My advice to you, and I'm gonna be giving advice after kind of each section that I have, my advice to you is make this a priority. Make family and relationships a priority. I feel like in today's day and age, a lot of people don't prioritize this as much as they should. It's more about me and money and what I can get out of my career and you know relationships and getting married and all that stuff is kind of put on the back burner. But I think that isn't really a great way to live. I think as a society that really needs to change because I think relationships and getting married and having children are one of the most important things that somebody can do. Next, let's talk about money. Now, money is a relatively new thing to me because I've always been pretty poor, uh, especially when I first started my career outside of college. I had like $1,000 to my name. That's when my wife actually married me. I was very, very poor. I didn't have a job even when we got married. I was maybe making $10 an hour uh, working about 20 hours a week at this rehabilitation center that I was working at. But besides that, I was not making much money. And so as I progressed with money throughout my career, going from you know making 36,000 all the way up to 125, all the way up to about 200,000, my views on money have definitely changed. Money is extremely important and you have to be very smart about it. And when I was younger and I didn't have any, it wasn't that big of a deal. I just didn't spend much money, but it is really important. And as you make more of it, you have more responsibilities with that money. I think one of the best things that I ever did was not going into debt. I had no student loan debt. I had no debt for personal loans or credit cards or anything. I had no debt, but I just didn't have any money. And that was kind of the problem. But that was one of the best decisions looking back that I ever did. I just didn't get into debt. The other thing I've done ever since I kind of worked at Amerisource Bergen around 2020, at least for the last five years, is I've started investing. Even when I wasn't making that much, you know, it was maybe it was $100 per month. My company did a 100% match on any 401k contributions, and I took advantage of it, even if it wasn't a lot of money. It was still something, and it got me in the mindset and the habit of investing. And now that I make more money, I'm able to put more money into investments. And I know in the future, I'm really gonna be thanking myself for doing this now, instead of waiting until I'm 40 or 50 to start doing. My biggest piece of advice as it comes to money is most of the money that you're gonna make is determined by your career. The next biggest thing which is gonna determine how much money you have is how you spend it. What are your spending habits like? Do you have a budget? Are you actually putting money aside? If you can't put money aside, are you at least living within your means so you're not going into debt? If you are, try to pay off that debt as quickly as possible. Try to get into some field where you can at least pay for your expenses. Once you're able to do that, then you can start investing and you can start making money for the future. The next area is health and habits. And over the past, I would say especially eight years, Health and habits have really changed dramatically for me because when I was you know, in college and I had a lot of free time, I worked out a lot and I studied a lot. I had fairly good habits. But then you get married, you start having kids and you have a career and things fall by the wayside. When my two youngest were born and COVID hit and we were at home and the kids were always crying and I was trying to work remotely, I didn't eat the best. 
and I didn't work out that much and it was very, very tough. But even at the ripe old age of 30, I have already had some medical stuff, right? I started getting a lot of pain in both of my wrists. I realized I had carpal tunnel and the doctors were like, well, you know, you can take this medicine, you can get these shots and these injections. Um, and I did, I got one injection in my right hand because the pain was so bad. I couldn't even write or type, um, it was really bad. And I started realizing that my body's very reactive to food and it is very reactive to whether I work out or not. And so, especially about four years ago, I started getting really serious about eating better, about taking care of my body, and I stopped eating a lot of processed foods. And so I really stopped eating out for almost six months, and my carpal tunnel just felt way better. And now, even today, I have almost no pain. Um, it had a lot to do with what I was eating. I was eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of bad oils, a lot of things that just shouldn't be going to my body. And so my wife and I make a really concerted effort to eat a lot cleaner. We have our protein, which is usually like a chicken. We eat a lot of veggies and we eat a lot of fruit at our house. It has really changed my life for the better. And of course I work out just in my office. I have some dumbbells and I do push-ups, and I do, you know, bicep curls and I do squats and different stuff throughout the day as I can do it. I'm very fortunate that I work at home and I'm able to do that. I really kind of emphasize and put a priority on that so that I stay healthy and I don't have those medical conditions continue to pop up and make my life a lot more difficult. My biggest advice on this is make good daily decisions. So on a whole, you can make bad decisions. I still eat bad things. I don't work out but my daily habits are good. So when I go out with my wife or when we go on a trip and I wanna eat really unhealthy, I can and I don't really feel guilty about it because my daily habits are very good. Make your health a priority because I promise you when you hit 30 like me and you start feeling it, uh, your 40s and 50s and 60s are not gonna feel better. And so make your health a priority. The last topic I wanna to talk about is career. And looking back at my career, it's been very wild and unorthodox and it's not, very normal. I started out working in a behavioral health hospital as a recreational therapist. That's what my degree's in. And then I somehow got into data. I started working in a nonprofit as a data collection specialist and analyst, became a data analyst at a small healthcare analytics company. Then I went to Amerisource Bergen, now called Sencora, I believe, because they changed their name after a merger. I became a data analyst and then a manager of data analytics. And then I quit my job to start consulting full-time. And then I started a platform called Analyst Builder. And then I did YouTube full-time. And so I've done a lot of things in the past eight years since I've been out of college. But even looking back, you know, I've always had different little jobs here and there throughout high school and throughout college and then now. Honestly, when I first got married to my wife, Christine, my career was not important to me at all. Like I just wanted to help people. I didn't really care how much money I made because I was just caring for me and I'm very low maintenance. Like you can ask my wife, I'm extremely low maintenance. And so living off two grand a month, that was enough for me. Like I didn't need more than that. My expenses were a thousand dollars per month when she first met me. That's kind of where I'm coming from. And so as I've progressed throughout my life, I realized that having a career, having steady employment, being able to make certain decisions or working at certain companies has really helped my life. And so I learned, especially as I started having kids, that my career is really important. I have to provide. I have someone who is literally counting on me to survive. And so I have to put in the work and I have to put in the time to kind of advance my career. And so I started putting all of my extra time at the end of the day, once I got back from my low paying job, into advancing my skills. I was learning SQL and Excel and Tableau and all these different tools. And as I've gone on, I've learned a lot of other things as well, but those helped me advance in my career. And having that experience has transformed my life completely. I was able to start this YouTube channel about five and a half years ago now, almost six uh, years ago. And so it's transformed my life completely. And so my advice in this area is your career is important. Whether it's important now or it's important later, it is gonna be important. And so you should put time and effort into it. I highly recommend, I talk to a lot of people about this, I highly recommend putting your phone away, getting off Netflix and Amazon Prime and other distractions that are fun to do every so often, right? They're fun to do once or twice a week and watch your favorite show or watch a movie, but it shouldn't be your daily habit. Your daily habit should be improving your career and improving your life so that you can have the family and have the money and find things that bring you joy. In the end, my career is not my identity. I much prefer being called a husband and a father, and that is what I find a lot of identity in. 
And I think a lot of people try to put all their identity in their career, but I think at the end of your life, you're not gonna look back and be like, man, I'm so glad I spent all my time at the office. I think for most people, they wish they had spent more time with family. And so the career is important, money is important, but make sure you're doing it in the right way. I have a ton of other things that I wrote down. I just didn't want this to be like a 20 minute video talking and reminiscing about my life and giving advice. I try to keep it as condensed as possible because if you know me, I could just ramble on forever. But I'm getting older. Uh, I, I don't have time to waste. I can't talk for 20 minutes anymore. I gotta get to the point these days. So thank you guys for so much support over all these years on YouTube. I have no plans of slowing down. I have so many videos planned for Databricks and Alterx and all these different tools that I'm gonna bring to you, as well as a short series that I'll be doing about you know soft skills in analytics and in tech. I hope in some way that this was helpful to you. It spoke to you on a personal level. If it did, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear it. And of course, I will read almost all of the comments that you guys post as I normally do. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe below. I'll see you in the next one.